Hello, my name is Skylar Thomas, and I am a student here at Oklahoma Christian University. And today we're going to be rendering an ambient occlusion render. And we have a new clean slate in Maya. And uh, now let's add some polygons to our scene. First, we'll make a plane to kind of go our ground plane and I'm pressing the number five to shade it so I know where it is bring it up so I can see it better here's a sphere and bring this up a little bit I'm gonna press spacebar go to my orthographic view and then press spacebar again to see from the side so I can get it lined up really nice so we can get a good render there we go and press spacebar again to get back alright and now let's zoom in with our scroll key and position it let's make this a little bigger so we cover up everything there we go Alright, and then now we're going to drag and select everything, and we're going to go to our, get our render tabs. We, it's usually on this, click the render tab, and then we are going to click this button right here, which will add all of the selected objects in the window pane to a new layer. This new layer will be our ambient occlusion layer. Now, go back to our tab up here um, click our layer one and we'll go to our presets and we will click change it to occlusion you will make everything it will put a black shader on everything but that's normal that's how it reads the ambient occlusion pass and uh, let's just go up here and do a quick render right quick and well it looks pretty good right now and uh, just uh, let's keep this image so we can refer back to it later and <clears throat> in our uh, surface shader tab we have our MIB ambient occlusion and this is where we can modify the adjustments to uh, view the coloring and lighting of the scene better uh, the larger number of samples the more crisp and clean the image will be in our render and let's give a look at that there we go and uh, let's keep that one well those are 32 uh, our 32 samples and our 16 samples uh, not much difference there it's a lot less grainy. Uh, larger the sample, the more less grainy it will be. Let's just get ridiculous with it and say 100. And the larger the samples, the longer the rendering time will be also. And ah, there we go. That's a good one right there. You can see it's very less grainy, very smooth shading, a lot less grainy. 32, 16. And uh, we kept that image. And then we have our, there it is, our spread and our max distance that we use. And uh, the larger the max distance is from uh, any numbers between 1 or 0 and 1. And as you can see, for our max distance is set at 1, it should brighten everything really a lot. You can kind of see where the circle is, but man, that's super bright. We don't want one. We want a low number. Let's try one, zero, two. And let's increase the spread. The spread is basically your contrast of uh, between darks and brights. And uh, the lower the spread, the more contrast you'll see. And that one's just brightened out. Let's just keep that at zero. A spread of one 
should make it a lot less contrasty. That's good. Now let's see when we put one two five. Let's see what that looks like. Should be a very dramatic darks and lights. Yeah. There we go. You don't see the complete sphere in the rendering or anything. And oh, let's put that back. Let's put it one point five. Let's see how it looks. You can clearly see that each individual um, colors it uses, so that might be a little high. Let's just leave it at one. That's a good ambient occlusion render. And mind you, this isn't a render layers, this is just a single render pass. Just one single pass from our ambient occlusion preset. And that's it. Thank you.